In today's video, I'll be showcasing one of my most fortunate gameplays in a challenger lobby, featuring a crazy comeback that you won't want to miss. These challenger lobbies are insanely competitive, and a bit of luck makes the journey even more interesting. By watching this video, you'll learn how to play the 7 fortune synergy in similar situations. The game started with the trainer sentinel portal, and I got emblems like fortune, invoker, and altruist on my sentinel. Upon scouting, I noticed another player also had a fortune emblem. For my first First augment, I chose Prismatic Ticket. I tried finding a Kabuko, but it kept eluding me. I started with a Sivir Teemo opener, aiming for a trickshot bruiser comp, but in TFT, things rarely go as planned. Many of my opponents had bruiser emblems. Somehow, I finally found a Kabuko to activate the fortune synergy. I planned to go for an early fortune strategy and switch once the board got stronger, thus I pushed my luck. However, against another fortune player, I won and had a small cash out early on. Once again, I went on a losing streak. For the second augment, luckily, I got the fortune crest as my last choice. This is where I planned on playing the 7 fortune. Moving to level 6, I also got a Galio. I played a moderate board to minimize HP loss while losing rounds. Building the comp. Challenger lobbies are tough, making win streaks hard, and losing streaks equally challenging. I needed Zoe and Annie to activate 7 fortune, thus I marked it on my team planner. I also made sure that I wouldn't get too strong, so I just crafted defense items and kept them unequipped on the board. My competitor had already activated 5 fortune with an Annie. I positioned my units in much weaker positions, still I won in that close encounter, which made me cash out once again. Clutch moments. Upon getting a Zoe, I moved to level 7 and rolled down looking for a left Annie, but it still evaded me. In another roll down, I found an early Zaya and then, at last, Annie. Mission accomplished! That's it? No, wait. Now, the real game begins. From here on, it doesn't matter whether I win or lose, we will be getting lots of loot every round along with luck. I was looking for the 250 luck cash out where I have a possibility of getting a 3 star 5 cost. This game is all about possibilities, right? In the next encounter, Ash revealed my next opponents for the rest of the game. For the third augment, I opted for Cyberlink Uplink as at least one combat augment is preferred in a game for later stages. The turning point. My luck increased gradually. At level 8, I added away, and the luck kept on increasing. Some rounds were tough, with strong opponents reducing more of my HP. At 123 luck, I pushed further. A critical loss brought me down to 7 HP, and I couldn't risk it all here, so I cashed out at 155 luck. I got a couple of plus 1 slots, a maxed Sorica, and Tristana. I also had a 2 star Lee Sin, and then I moved to level 9. From there, it was domination with a strong board of 7 fortune, powered by Altruist and Dragon Lords. I reached the top 4 and rerolled for Annie and Lee Sin. With 3 opponents left, I hit a 3 star Lee Sin. Never mind with that tactician's crown on him. One opponent surrendered, leaving just the two of us. Just the two of us. As I closed in on a max Danny, my final opponent surrendered, deleting all their units. <laughs> what? Is that actually, that actually happened? I th of course it happened. I it was a fortunate and fun game with unexpected twists. Even in this challenger lobby, I would have gone for the 250 luck cash out. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Share your experiences in the comments below. And for more fun gameplay, subscribe to our channel, Item Swap.